Welcome to chapter 8, in which we'll cover basic concepts of chemical bonding. Before starting, I wanted to show you a hilarious cat from quickmeme.com. My favorite Avenger, Iron Man. Ha <laughs> ha! I also wanted to share with you an interesting fun fact. Now, I personally once attended a seminar years ago in which the speaker, who was also a chemistry professor, frankly, I don't remember his name, he said something to this effect. He said, we scientists have some of the most important messages to share with the world, but we often do so quite poorly. Why? Because we frequently tend to use too much technical jargon, which makes it difficult to impossible for lay people to understand why what we're talking about is so important. This is an area in which we scientists greatly need to improve. Now, that said, here's a funny YouTube video, or an HTML to a funny YouTube video, narrated by Bud Haggard back in 1977. This video is talking about a fictional device called the Turbo Encabulator. The purpose of the video was actually to just show scientists how ridiculous we often sound to lay people. Here's the HTML for it. I'll post a link as well that you can click and watch it on a separate tab on your... Uh, device. I tell you what, um, you don't have to watch it, but I highly recommend it because it is hilarious. Well, that said, we'll now get started into chapter 8. Before beginning, I beg you guys, permanezcan si sentados, por favor. After today's presentation, which will cover sections 1, th uh, 2, 3, and 5 from our text, you should be able to know the octet rule, draw Lewis symbols for atoms, and draw loose structures for covalent compounds. According to our text, atoms often gain, lose, or share electrons to achieve the same number of electrons as the noble gas closest to them in the periodic table. But you might wonder why. The reason I speculate is because they have that sort of magical sweet spot in which they have just the right number of protons in their nucleus ratio to the most beautifully balanced number of electrons in their outer orbitals. Now, because all noble gases except helium have eight valence electrons, many atoms undergoing reactions end up with eight valence electrons. This observation has led to a guideline known as the octet rule, which says that atoms tend to gain, lose, or share electrons until they are surrounded by eight valence electrons. Now, with that groundwork laid, I now want to introduce you to something called Lewis symbols. The Lewis symbol for an element consists of the element's chemical symbol, plus a dot for each valence electron. Sulfur, for example, has the electron configuration of neon, then 3s2,3p4, and therefore has six valence electrons, the two in its outer 3s orbital and these four right here in its outer 3p orbital. Its Lewis symbol, therefore, looks like this, where once again I've got its uh, atomic symbol, s, and six valence electrons surrounding it. So the dots are placed on four sides of the symbol, top, bottom, left, and right, and each side can accommodate up to two electrons. All four sides are equivalent, which means that the choice of where to place the two electrons, or one electron if you have an unpaired one, is completely arbitrary. That takes us then to a question, which I invite you to write the Lewis symbol for atoms of each of the following elements. I am not going to do this for you, but invite you to practice on your own. Now, we've talked in the past about covalent bonds, that is, bonds in which electrons are more or less shared between two atoms. The formation of covalent bonds can be represented using Lewis symbols. For example, the formation of H2, which is a molecule of hydrogen, from two individual hydrogen atoms can be represented like this. If I have two individual hydrogen atoms, each with its individual single valence electron, when they go together, they basically snap those two electrons into each other's holes in a complementary fashion to form this molecule. This is H2, or a, a Lewis diagram of H2. So uh, in forming the covalent bond, this bond between these two hydrogen atoms, each hydrogen atom acquires a second electron from its partner, which makes each hydrogen atom feel as if it's achieving the stable noble gas configuration of helium. On that note, forming a covalent bond between two chlorine atoms gives a similar chlorine or Cl2 molecule and can be represented in this way. I've got each of the individual chlorine atoms that have Lewis symbols showing seven valence electrons. When they get together, each of these unpaired electrons snaps into each other's complementary hole to form these two chlorines that are now bonded together. This is a Lewis representation of chlorine uh, gas or Cl2 
So by having each individual chlorine atom share its unbonded electron and then plugging them into each other's empty holes, each individual chlorine atom now feels as if it has eight electrons around it. That is a full octet in its valence shell, thereby achieving the noble gas configuration of its nearest neighbor, argon. With this groundwork laid, I now want to teach you how to draw Lewis structures. Lewis structures are small, simplified models or depictions showing the shapes of individual molecules. To draw a Lewis structure for a molecule, we first of all have to add up all the valence electrons for every atom in the molecule. For anions, add one electron to the total number for each negative charge. For cations, subtract one electron from the total number for each positive charge. Don't worry about which electrons came from which atoms. Only worry about the total number. Step two, write the symbols for all the atoms in the molecule showing which atoms are attached to which. Then connect them with a single bond, which is a dash, which represents two electrons. Chemical formulas are often written in the order in which the atoms are connected. In many polyatomic ions, for instance, the first atom in the formula is the central atom in the Lewis structure. Usually, but not always, the central atom is the less electronegative atom. Step three, complete the octets around all the atoms bonded to the central atom, except for hydrogen, which only wants two electrons around it. That is, hydrogen only wants a two-tet, like helium. Four, place leftover electrons on the central atom, even if doing so results in more than an octet of electrons around it. And five, if there are not enough electrons to give the central atom an octet, try multiple bonds, such as double or triple bonds. Now I realize all these steps I've just given you sound a little bit complicated and vague and difficult to understand. So that's why I'm going to show you now a series of problems. In this problem, I'm asking you to use Lewis structures and symbols to draw the Lewis structure of silicon tetrachloride from silicon and chlorine atoms. I'm not going to do that uh, right here for you in this presentation, but we'll place a link here to a separate video in which I do. In this question, I'm asking you to construct a Lewis structure for O2 in which each atom achieves an octet of electrons, and then explain why it's necessary to form a double bond in the Lewis structure of O2. I won't show you how to do this one, but we'll invite you to do it on your own. In this question, I'd like you to draw Lewis structures for each of the following molecules. Now, I won't show you the answers to these in this video, but we'll post a link here that you can click on to watch me answer some of them. For the remaining ones, I'd like to invite you to try them on your own. In this question, I ask you to draw Lewis structures for each of the following ions or molecules. Identify those that do not obey the octet rule, and then explain why they do not. Once again, I won't answer these questions for you in this video, but we'll post a link to a separate video in which I do. I'm not going to answer all of them. I'll only do two of them. But afterwards, we'll invite you to try the other two on your own. And lastly, I'd like to ask you to complete each Lewis structure below by adding electron pairs we're missing and indicate the formal charge of each nitrogen atom. I haven't talked about formal charge in this video, but we'll post a link here to a separate video in which I explain what that actually means.